Okay, what we're going to talk about today, <clears throat> or in this episode, is the parts of the hoof. Now, I've done a new dissection, and we, as you know, th this series, as I say, what it's about is if you really get to know this whole internal foot, that's really going to help your trimming because then you're going to be able to look on the exterior um, and you're going to be able to tell where you've got distortions or things that are going on in the hoof that do not agree with the shape and form of the internal foot. Okay, so anyway, uh, yesterday I did a dissection on another front foot of Toby's and uh, let's take a look at the old one first now I put this in a dehydrator and I've dehydrated it which is really awesome because I can just keep it sitting on my desk and uh, whenever I think of something or I have a question I could grab it grab me a ruler look at different things about the foot so this is the dehydrated foot of Toby's okay so <clears throat> We're going to set that over there for now. Now, let's take a look at this freshly dissected foot. Okay, now there are some things that, let's see, let's put this down here a little bit. There's some things that I want you to see. First of all, I want you to look at, uh, first of all, let's look at the coriums. Okay, now the corium is from which different things grow like you have the frog corium, the sole corium, and the coronary corium which is the coronary band which is right here which produces the hoof wall that grows down like this now right here you have what's called the lamina the sensitive lamina that's attached to the bone now if you look here you can see let's see we need some more light hold on Let's get some light on this because I want you to be able to see. Okay, now if you look at this foot, you will see that this is the lamina right here. And this is interlocked into the wall of, of into the inner layer of the lamina of the hoof wall here, which is called the uh da -da 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 -da. can't remember right now, but anyway. It's hooked into the lamina right here, just like, like this, like that, okay? Now, I want you to see the bone. You can see the bone under here, because when I took the hoof capsule off, it tore this part of the lamina off of the foot, so you get a real clear picture of the bone underneath the lamina and you also get a real good idea of just how thick that lamina is that covers that bone. Okay, now when it dries out, it looks like this. See? But it's at least, let's see here, an eighth of an inch thick. Let's put our little handy dandy ruler on here. To see exa exactly how thick it is. It is an eighth of an inch thick. The lamina that covers the foot. Now, what we have here is the sole corium. Now, see how it looks different? See all the little, little papules? That's what those are called. Sole papules. And they fit into little tubes in the sole here and they grow the sole grows down from this sole what's called the sole corium papillae right here now one thing you'll see right here we want to look at the sole at this sole corium because it's very thick it's very rubbery and you know, the, the foot grows forward like this, and it consequently, too, also the sole corium being attached to the foot grows slightly forward in the foot right here. So that instead of the foot ending right smack dab at the end of the bone here, it extends a little bit. About, I'd say, an eighth of an inch 
maybe a little more right there let's look at that see this so let's get a good look inside that toe for you there okay now right here you have your frog corium and this is from which your frog grows can you see that there Okay, and of course right here is your lateral cartilage. Now the lateral cartilage, okay, now look. Look where the coronary band is right here. Okay, you should not have hoof wall any higher than the coronary band here. Now this is nice and relaxed, but it, it can move. Well, let's show you this is right here. See, that can move up and down. So when the walls get loaded, an excess wall gets joined into the capsule from here to here, it shoves this all up. And the wall can actually grow up and so constrict this lateral cartilage right here that the horse does not have free movement. Uh, he was jammed a little bit right in here, but he wasn't jammed in, in the hoof capsule real bad. I'm just not real eloquent today. So, you know, you want the hoof wall here not to be shoving up and encasing this lateral cartilage like that. Because why? Because the foot has to... The mechanics of the foot and the mechanics of the lateral cartilage, as you see, they're not attached right there. They're open. See there? Okay, so when the horse walks and runs and all that, it's, okay, he's pressing down in here. And this ankle, the bone here, has to go be able to descend down in there like that. What is that? That's P2. Okay, so you have your coffin bone which is called P1, then you have what's called the short pastern bone, which is right here, and then the long pastern bone right here. So P1, P2, P3 is what they're called. And they have other names too. Okay, so that horse, you want these lateral cartilages to be nice and full and free in order to be able to move. Now that ought to really drive it home for you why some horses are so... Uh, stiff when they trot and uh, also why they get sore because when this hoof capsule here gets jammed up and the wall grows up like this it encases these cartilages and restricts the movement okay so I'm not really into this today, but I wanted to get some stuff done. Okay, so now one thing I noticed on him when I dissected this is that he has excellent connection from right here down to here. Excellent, perfect connection. But from here to about to here, he did have a little bit of stretching of the lamina. Because, uh, you know, I'd only been trimming him. This is a, I'd trimmed him maybe three or four times. And he had very long toes. But the toes were coming back and the wall was growing down. Now there's something I want you to notice. First of all, notice that the coffin bone is not ground parallel. Okay? Now, it can't be ground parallel. Because, first of all, the bulb here and the frog stick out below the actual foot. So the way the hoof capsule is built, it just can't be ground parallel. It's not supposed to be. And if you try and force this foot into being ground parallel, you wind up with a very low angled, long toe. Okay, we'll have to finish that on the next session.